Welcome back to News Channel 9 at 6. It is time for David's winter weather forecast. I know I'm happy about that. You've been crunching the numbers. Yeah. I mean, we've been doing this. Channel 9's been doing it since the 1980s. And oh, it's, it's, just it's a long-standing Storm Track 9 tradition. I'm following the footsteps of those who came before me trying to carry the torch here and keep this going. And I kind of get the feeling that I'm a college professor sitting here, maybe at UT or UGA, yeah. you know, waiting on you to present your... Uh, this thesis is my thesis paper here. here. Seriously. Yeah, this, is, this is the long version. It's got a lot of pluses, minuses, uh -huh. whatnot. And, and I've got the long version online. So the Storm Track 9 blog, check it out. It's already posted online. Let's, let's right have now, it, student. Here's there the short and sweet version, okay? <laughs> the first thing we do is we analyze past seasons. So this season, it's totally different from last year. Remember we had La Nina, those super La Ninas we talked about? This year, it's a weak El Nino. Now, it's not like the ones of the 80s and 90s are really strong. This is a weak one. So that's going to play a factor in looking back at some of the past winters. So when you look back at the past, look at the ones that had weak El Nino, a colder Pacific, warm Atlantic. And there were some striking similarities between several of these winters. In fact, a lot of these matched up with winters that we had in the 60s and 70s. And a few of those more recently in 03 and 06. Here's what's interesting. Most of them have below normal temperatures. Four of the six has some really, really deep Arctic intrusions of air of less than 10 degrees. But here's something else. Six of the six that closely matched had snow on ice locally. So that's something to factor into. But also what we do is I look at the storm tracks in the upper level pattern through autumn. That can sometimes provide a key as what could happen during the rest of the winter. So I'm leaning heavily on statistics here and going with the fact that we're going to continue to see below normal temperatures. I think the warmth of last year has back to the west. Alaska back to the west while the colder air invades the east and southeast. As far as our snow and ice chances, I like our chances this year. And it's based on the fall storm track pattern with it originating from the southern plain states through the mid-south through the mid-Atlantic. We saw this happen several times. And you may have noticed in October and early November, I mentioned that if those storms had come when it was colder, you may be talking about snow. So I do foresee several borderline situations, very frustrating forecast days up, where we're going to be right on that borderline of rain, ice, or snow. But one other thing that concerns me is when you have a pattern like this, ice can result as well. I don't know about you, but I like snow, but I don't do ice. So some anxious days may be ahead as we approach the winter. So in summary, below normal temperatures, I like our chances for above normal snow and ice chances, and I do foresee potentially some deep Arctic air intrusions. In other words, some bug-killing weather, as people call it. So we'll have to see what happens. Regardless of what we say here in the past research, the weather's going to do what it wants to do, and we're going to be providing you for that forecast every step of the way throughout the winter. You can always depend on us. That's the season 